This tutorial will get you started using Oracle NoSQL Database. You will install the product, learn common terminology, and become familiar with the flexible options for durability and consistency. You will learn how to start and use KV Lite. Also, you will be given suggestions for how to learn more about Oracle NoSQL Database. The first step in installing Oracle NoSQL Database is to decide whether you will install the Enterprise or Community Edition. The next slide will discuss some of the functional differences between the two versions. Both versions are available for download at oracle.com by clicking on the Download tab. This tutorial is not intended to tell you which version to install from the licensing point of view. For that, you should refer to the license agreements for both products and optionally consult with your Oracle sales rep. Once the kit is downloaded in either version, review the license in the home directory. The file name is license.txt. The Oracle NoSQL database and support teams do monitor and provide assistance in the forum, but no guaranteed service levels. If you want guaranteed service levels response times, you would want Oracle support and therefore the Enterprise Edition. Now that you have decided which version of Oracle NoSQL database to start with, let's discuss and demonstrate the software installation steps. I am going to present the steps now and then in a moment I will demonstrate installation running on a Linux platform. If you don't have a direct link, the easiest way to get to the download page is to go to oracle.com and click on the download tab. One of the listed downloads is Oracle NoSQL Database. The kit is available as either a zip or tar file. Choose one to download, extract the compressed file to a directory, that's really all there is to installation, and start KV Lite. In a few minutes we will discuss KV Lite, but for now think of it as a single computer test environment for Oracle NoSQL Database. After we have started KV Lite, we will compile and run the sample application, Hello Big Data World. From the oracle.com download page, I'm going to select the product NoSQL database. And we've decided that we will download the Enterprise Edition. I'll accept the license and download the tarball. Let's expand the downloaded kit. That's basically all there is to installing the product. Let's take a look at the directory structure. The doc directory contains the product documentation. The examples directory contains a number of Java Oracle NoSQL database applications. We're going to compile and run one of those in just a few minutes. And finally, there's the lib directory, uh, which contains a number of jar files necessary to run the product. And in this directory, you also notice the license.txt file. I am going to show you how to start KV Lite. This is the single computer test environment for Oracle NoSQL database and then we will compile and run one of the sample applications. Note we can see all of the commands available from the KV Store jar file, one of them being KV Lite. I'm going to start KV Lite, taking all the defaults, and then we're going to compile and run a sample application to confirm that we have Oracle NoSQL Database installed correctly. We will compile and run the Hello Big Data World sample application directly from the examples directory and using the KV client jar file. Now we will run the generated class file. 
and here we see the output Hello Big Data World. This confirms that the client application was able to run using KV Lite. At this point, we have downloaded the Oracle NoSQL database kit, extracted the contents of the downloaded kit, started KV Lite, compiled and linked Hello Big Data World, and then run Hello Big Data World to confirm that the installation went successfully. Now that we know that Oracle NoSQL database is installed on your system and have run a sample client application with KV Lite, let's introduce some of the terminology often used with the product. In this slide, I will introduce some of the common terms found in Oracle NoSQL database. A key value pair, think record, is retrieved by specifying all or part of the key. A key can be simple, such as a user ID, credit card number, timestamp, or consist of multiple components, such as last name and first name. Or, think of the directory structure in a file system where there can be several components. The key itself is a string. The other part of a key value pair, the value, is a byte array. The byte array can be anything you want, a password for a user ID, perhaps encrypted, an address consisting of a street, city, zip code, and country, a serialized record, an image such as a picture or an MRI, an XML document, a pointer to a file, anything you want and as long or short as you want. A key value store or KV store is a container of key value pairs across all nodes. Think database. A partition is a hashed set of records that will be stored in the same shard based on the major key. Replication factor is the number of replicas or copies of the data. A replication factor of three means there are three copies of the data in total for each key value pair. A shard is a set of partitions, also known as a replication group. Automatic sharding, or partitioning, is done transparently by Oracle NoSQL database. The API calls made to Oracle NoSQL database in no way indicate which shard your key value pairs will be stored. Automatic sharding is how horizontal scaling is achieved. For example, the Oracle NoSQL database load balancer on a read request will determine the shard and select the replica to service the read request. It will distribute read requests evenly. A storage node, which is typically a physical machine with CPU, memory, and storage that manages one or more replication nodes. KV store size is useful to understand as a first step in estimating the number of storage nodes required and how much disk space is needed. For more information, please see the Oracle NoSQL Database Administrator's Guide. Let's take a look at an application running, such as Hello Big Data World, that will access and perform Create, Read, Update, Delete, or CRUD operations on the KV Store. The typical Oracle NoSQL Database deployment has redundancy at all levels, which gives us both scalability and no single point of failure. If you want additional throughput, add hardware. We have multiple instances of the application running to avoid a single point of failure. Each instance may optionally invoke many threads. The Oracle NoSQL database keeps track of performance statistics for each of the replication nodes. On a read operation, the driver determines an optimum replication node to service the read request. A shard consists of one or typically many partitions. So, for example, in this deployment, we have three replication nodes in each shard from one to n. A read request would be serviced by any replication node in the shard. A write or update request would be serviced by the single master in the shard, one of the replication nodes. The application through the Oracle NoSQL database API has no knowledge of where the data is. You can look at the source code, for example, to confirm that there's no knowledge of the way the key value pairs are partitioned. 
if the number of shards were to change, the application code would not need to be modified. Each application instance will link in kvclient.jar. Each replication node represents an instance of running kvstore.jar. So shard 1 may have three different computers representing three storage nodes and three replication nodes. It is important to understand what consistency and durability policies are available in a NoSQL database. The next few slides will discuss the durability and consistency options available in Oracle NoSQL Database. Oracle NoSQL Database has a lot of flexibility depending on your application and performance transactional requirements. A distributed system maintains copies of its key value pairs on multiple replication nodes in order to provide high availability and scalability. When an application makes a change to a key value pair on one machine, that change has to be propagated to the other replicas. Since the change propagation is not instantaneous, there's an interval of time during which some of the copies will have the most recent change, but others will not. In other words, the copies will be mutually inconsistent. However, the change will eventually be propagated to all the copies, and hence the term eventual consistency. The term eventual consistency is simply an acknowledgement that there is an unbounded delay in propagating a change made on one machine to all of the other copies. Eventual consistency is not meaningful or relevant in centralized single copy systems, since there is no need for propagation. The trade-offs are speed, you want the change to be considered complete, and availability, you want all replicas to have the change available before the change is considered complete. For speed, some systems where the change originates send asynchronous messages to other machines and then declare the operation successful. This is sometimes referred to as fire and forget. Eventual consistency, then, is an acknowledgement that there is an unbounded delay in propagating a change made on one node to all other replicas in the shard. To be highly available, a system might synchronously block the machine until all other machines receive the change. Updates are much slower, but you gain a higher degree of consistency. Which policy works best? Fortunately, in Oracle NoSQL Database, you do not have to live with just one policy. Let's take a look at Oracle NoSQL Database transaction policy for write operations. On writes, there is a default durability policy for the entire KV store, or an open handle, or a specific API call, which is a single operation. This write transaction durability consists of a sync policy on both the master and replicas and a replica acknowledgement policy. By durability, we mean ensuring that a transaction once committed is persistent and will not be rolled back. The level of durability depends on the change being logged and the updates acknowledged by zero to n replicas up to the replication factor. The default gives you eventual consistency. The different levels of sync policy reflect what happens to the log entries for this update prior to commit. The choices are sync, force the changes to disk, write no sync would be forcing to the OS buffer, and no sync which would be writing to the local log buffer but flush when convenient. The highest level of durability is obtained by using sync. The replica acknowledgement policy you choose can be all replicas. That will ensure that when the transaction is considered committed complete on the master, all replicas will have the change. That is the highest level of consistency. Depending on application requirements and performance considerations, you could instead choose a replica acknowledgement policy of simple majority of the replicas in a shard, or none of the replicas in a shard, which would clearly be the fastest. 
The default durability policies, both for the master and replica, are no sync. The default replica acknowledgement policy is simple majority. Now that we have looked at the transaction durability options for write operations in Oracle NoSQL database, let's take a look at consistency for read operations. When I perform a read request on a key value pair, I can choose to have the replica selected to perform the read be absolutely up to date, i.e. read from the master, or the replica can lag the master by some time increment, or a version, a read from a replica that is current with the specified transaction token. If, for this API operation, consistency does not matter, I can specify none. A consistency policy only needs to be specified if you want to override the default setting, which is none. To summarize, durability policy and consistency policy are configurable. For durability, there is a trade-off between durability and speed. The fastest durability policy, write performance, is none, where the logs are not synced, but lower dur durability. If the logs are flushed, you achieve the highest level of durability. The HA acknowledgement policy also affects durability. The default ACK policy is majority. Changing the acknowledgement policy to all replicas for a specific write operation will result in the highest level of durability. For consistency, take into account application requirements. Most reads will work nicely with no consistency policy. One example where you might want to change the consistency policy for a specific call might be a read transaction that will decide whether to approve a credit card purchase, where there might be several requests at once for a given credit card number. The credit card purchase will not be approved if the purchase amount will exceed the credit card holder's credit limit. For that specific read, the software developer could override the default consistency policy of none and instead use absolute to ensure the credit balance is up to date. Unless the read request is similar to the credit card purchase, it is recommended that you start with the default consistency policy, which is the fastest since it can be serviced by any replica in the shard. Since you ran KV Lite earlier in this tutorial, Let's discuss what KV Lite is in a little more detail. KV Lite is a great way to develop and test your application logic before further testing on multiple storage nodes. It's a great way to get started with Oracle NoSQL database, especially learning the API. KV Lite runs as a single storage node and single shard. As you saw earlier in the tutorial, it is easy to start. I have taken applications that I developed and tested on KV Lite, and then tested them on a multiple shard system, say a 3x3, and did not have to make any modifications to the code before deployment. At this point, you have Oracle NoSQL database installed on a single system, perhaps your laptop. You have confirmed it's running OK by starting KV Lite and running one of the sample applications. You are also familiar with some of the important Oracle NoSQL database terminology. As a next step, you may want to learn more about the API to start building an application. To learn the API, you can review the source code of the schema sample application, review the getting started guide found in your documentation directory, and also use the Java doc and frequently asked questions. Oracle University offers training classes on the API and administration. Go to education.oracle.com on the web and search for Oracle NoSQL database to find those courses. You can look at other Oracle NoSQL database tutorials like this one. You can go to youtube.com and search for Oracle NoSQL. There are lots of upcoming tutorials including more advanced topics and new features. A great place to obtain more information about Oracle NoSQL database is on the active online forum. You can review questions and responses as well as ask your own questions. Questions are responded to by the user community, Oracle support, and Oracle engineering. 
Thank you for watching this Getting Started tutorial. Look for other tutorials on Oracle NoSQL database on this site. If you have comments or suggestions for other Oracle NoSQL database topics, please let us know by posting a comment here or sending an email to ron.cohen at oracle.com.